You know how easy, remember I used to tell you how easy it is to be presidential? But you'd all be out of here right now. But you'd be so bored. Because I could stand out, right? I could stand out. I'm very presidential. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being here tonight. Rick Saccone will be a great, great congressman. He will help me very much. And then you go, God bless you, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you very much. That's easy. See, that's easy. That's much easier than doing what I have to do. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe after you talk to Bob Mueller, you won't think it's quite so easy. That's President Trump stumping for a candidate that he reportedly trashes in private. He's doubling down on everything. On all of these head-spinning policy decisions, he's doubling down on his attacks against the media. He's doubling down on his attacks against Hillary Clinton. He's doubling down on his inflated margins of victory in 2016. In short, just another day at the office. Good morning and welcome to Morning Joe. It's Monday, March the 12th. With us, we've got veteran columnist and MSNBC contributor Mike Barnacle, associate editor of Commentary Magazine, Noah Rothman, columnist and associate editor for the Washington Post, David Ignatius, also NBC News national political reporter, Heidi Prisbella will be with us shortly, and Mika is out. She is feeling a bit under the weather. You know, there's so much to talk about, but David Ignatius, um, I think the takeaway from this speech is that there was Donald Trump's worst instincts coming out, the very things that concern me the most, that I don't think concern a lot of people in middle America, but... Uh, it's the trashing of constitutional norms, but also in this speech specifically, you had him attacking a member of the media by name, encouraging the, 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 the audience to boo that member of the media. Uh, and then you had him praising dictators and actually discouraging this crowd that he just encouraged to boo a member of the free press discouraging them from booing Kim Jong-un. It was vintage Donald Trump. Joe, I, I thought he uh, was almost uh, uh, trashing the traditional role of president in that little clip that we saw, making fun of the orderly conduct of power, the dignity uh, and behavior that we associate with the president of the United States, uh, likening that to an automaton marching around like a penguin. Uh, but no, with, with Donald Trump, you got something different. Well, what do you have? You you cited some some of the some of the points. You, you have inflammatory, uh, uh, kind of uh, rabble rousing. Uh, we used to say uh, uh, speeches. You have attacks on the media, which I think are getting are getting should really worry people. These direct. Uh, uh, off-color attacks on, on members of the media. And, and you have a president who's decided that the things that people criticize that, that are seen as destabilizing, as upsetting the system, are the things that he prizes. That's what he wants to do. So as you're right, he, 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 is, he is doubling down. He's saying, this is the kind of president that I want to be. Uh, we'll see if he loses this race tomorrow in Pennsylvania and the, 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 the political tide away from him continues, I think it'll make it harder for him to, to, to be that destabilizing disruptor. But we sure saw it on display in this speech. We certainly did. And that's what the president was in Western Pennsylvania for. There's a special election tomorrow in Pennsylvania 18. It is a seat, just in case you haven't kept up with it that the Republicans always win by 15, 20 points. Donald Trump won it by almost 20 points just a year ago, year and a half ago. And the last Republican to run, actually, I believe he was unopposed, but usually wins by 20 percentage points. This, I mean, paint this district red all the time. Uh, but right now, once again, we have a Republican who should easily be coasting to victory in big trouble. Here's more from the president's rally for Rick Saccone. President Xi, president for life. I was joking and I said, huh, president for life, that sounds good. Maybe we're gonna have to try it. Maybe we're gonna. 
president for life. But I'm joking. But I'm joking. South Korea came to my office after having gone to North Korea and seeing Kim Jong-un. And, no, it's very positive, no. After the meeting, you may do that, but now we have to be very nice, because let's see what happens. That Washington, D.C., I got a lot of evil there, but we're getting it out, step by step. A lot of evil, a lot of bad people. A lot of bad people, a lot of fake media. Look at them, a lot of fake media. Fake, fake media. It's 1999. I'm on Meet the Press, a show now headed by Sleepy Eyes Chuck Todd. He's a sleeping son of a bitch, I'll tell you. You know, he, he likes to put names on people. He did that through the entire presidential election, including all the Republicans that he beat. Um, so the, the, these, are, these are campaign rally issues. This is something that, that is at a campaign rally, and uh, the president likes making funny names. If we're to dismiss everything he says at a campaign rally, as I think you're trying to imply, then are you saying we shouldn't no, you're, cover you're, these you're, things? You're, you're, you're putting words in my mouth. I wasn't in any way saying you should dismiss that whatsoever, and you should obviously carry them, because these are important moments for the president, and this is news. What I'm trying to say is I'm focused on the policies. Well, you know, the president likes funny names. Mike Barnacle, he actually talked about the fake media. He, he got people booing. The booing is getting stronger uh, by the day whenever he goes out there and whips up like it's a Mussolini rally. And yes, that's what I said. I, it certainly, there is nothing American about what Donald Trump did in Pennsylvania when he tries to turn an entire audience whether it's against Katie Turr or whether it's against Chuck Todd or, you know, this weekend he went after Maggie Haberman. But when you're in, in, in rallies like that and you whip your supporters into a frenzy, there are real life consequences to that. Threats follow, often death threats. Uh, and um, that is actually, Mike, unfortunately, that's exactly what he wants. Well, Joe, I mean, his uh, constant attacks over many, many months and days, including many, many months and days as president of the United States, they've worked. They've had an impact on this country. They've had an impact on people. They've changed the way people think about the news that they read or the news that they see. That's, that's one thing that certainly happened. But in that clip that we just showed, he was talking about Washington, D.C., and he said there's lots of evil in Washington, D.C., lots of bad people. And the President of the United States has injected successfully a slow poison into the culture of this country. I don't know what the impact is going to be years down the road, but I do know that one of the things we ought to be worried about is the damage that he has already done to the presidency, and we should be worried about how lasting is it and can it be repaired. Yeah, when, when he uh, said, you know, uh, I could be presidential, just look at me, be presidential, cause sort of mocking, as David said, presidential behavior, he's saying, you know, impulse control is easy. I could do that. Well, I'd love to see some impulse control just to demonstrate that, it's ca that you're capable of it. He's in Pennsylvania now speaking to this audience because of his lack of impulse control. The reason why this is a competitive race and the reason why we're likely to see some Democratic victories in November is because of Donald Trump. It's not because of the economy. The economy's humming. It's got room to run. It's not because of foreign policy. We, it, there's some troubles abroad, but we don't have a lot of bodies coming home of American soldiers, and that's why people vote on a foreign policy election. This is a values election. It's a referendum on Donald Trump and his behavior, and behavior like that is precisely why voters are going to head to the polls, more energized for the Democrats than they are for Republicans, to register their dissatisfaction faction with this president. No, you're exactly right. And I, I sat there looking at the rally and looking at the clips of the rally and was thinking the same thing that, again, Donald Trump always rightly accuses the media of being in a bubble. But nobody's in a bigger bubble than Donald Trump because he goes to these rallies where, where he finds people who like him and he speaks to that 33 percent. But everything he did in that speech offended uh, educated suburban voters, 
uh, in the Pittsburgh suburbs that are going to be voting in this election. A lot of what he did offended um, a, a lot of women, as he does. Every one of the speeches offends a lot of women. There was a New York Times article yesterday talking about how Trump support is falling among evangelical women uh, significantly, 13 percent over a short time period. Uh, all of the all of the rabble rousing that David was talking about. Noah, it gets him big cheers. He used to like to brag that he was, you know, the biggest show on earth that didn't carry around a guitar or play a piano, often likened himself to Elton John in these venues. And he's getting that feedback, but you're exactly right. He is the one that is helping elect people like Connor Lamb or keeping races close in Pennsylvania 18 that Republicans should have locked up weeks ago. And you mentioned the coalition movement, uh, which is really key here. He's definitely courting this uh, white working class base that helped propel him to victory in 2016. But the reciprocal side of that is that college educated voters, women, et cetera, in the suburbs are moving away from Republicans, moving away from Donald Trump. This is only going to exacerbate that tension. And it's one of those things that you would like to see yeah. Republicans who are interested in electoral victories start to say, well, look, this is a bad deal. We're already sort of still in thrall to this 2016 myth about Donald Trump's coalition because nobody saw it coming. But after November, if they really get hit at the polls hard, that 33, 38 percent, whatever it is, is going to start to look a lot more like 38 percent. And it's not going to be the, the, the tiger that we make it out to be. Thank you so much for using the word most relevant about this myth. There has been this myth around Donald Trump since he got elected in November. And the myth has grown that somehow everything that he did worked perfectly and somehow that's going to work in the future. I've said it a thousand times. What happened in 2016 uh, happened was a fluke. Uh, even Donald Trump himself told me one time he could have had the election 20 times and that is the one day that he would have won. Uh, and it's, it's insane. He's, he's focused on one demographic white working class voters. He's offending a lot of other demographics that he needs to win elections. And he is doing exactly the opposite of what we were criticizing Hillary Clinton of doing last fall in the home stretch, where she was ignoring white working class voters. I mean, you've got to have the entire coalition. And if, if, if you're helping white working class voters, but you're losing college educated Republicans, you're losing Republican women, you're starting to lose Republican evangelicals, you certainly won't have them vote for Hillary Clinton over you, but you will keep them home in midterm elections, <clears throat> then you really are sealing your own fate. Let's Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.